When I begin shading my sphere and practicing doing this on my worksheet, one of the things that you are going to notice is I'm going to start with the darkest dark. My shading for this cast shadow, a cast shadow is basically what is laying on the surface of the table or whatever surface the object is sitting on. The cast shadow is going to be darkest where the cast shadow and the object meet and it is going to get lighter as it gets further away. You will notice that as I am putting in this cast shadow, I very quickly map out the outline of the shadow itself with my really dark value. I find it easier to control my craftsmanship if I get a little bit of this clean, crisp edge and then I fill in the rest of the value. Again, notice that I am going through and I'm making it the darkest as it is closest to the sphere and it gets a little bit lighter as it gets further away. When I am almost finished, I'm going to double check and make sure that what I have is accurate and make any corrections or edit it before I move on. At this point in time in the video, I want you to go ahead and pause the video, complete your cast shadow, and then when you're ready, push play. We are going to move on to the actual sphere. One of the things that we're going to work on is the shadow edge. What I am going to be putting is this value that is opposite of our light source is going to be where my object is the darkest. I'm not going to go up to the exact edge of the object. I'm actually going to leave a little bit of a gap because I'm going to come back to that area a little bit later. So I'm mapping this in really quickly I'm putting in a nice dark value. And as I do this, I'm kind of going around the sphere as if I'm doing a small section of the sphere that goes all the way around. They make almost crescent shapes as I move around the sphere as I have in this worksheet that are already mapped out for you. When I do my shadowed edge, I'm actually going to do a couple of my sections of this sphere because it takes up more than just one little ring. I'm going to do maybe two to three rings. As I do each ring, the value should get a little bit lighter, but you do not want to see where the dark meets the light. You want them to shade and blend together. So what I'm going to do as I complete this is I'm going to make sure that they transition and it's not too strong of a contrast where one value starts and the other one stops. It is a gradual change. Please pause the video and try to create your shadow edge. And then when you are ready, push play again. The middle of my sphere is going to be addressed with a mid-tone. This is the actual color of the object where the lighting has not changed it in either a highlight or a shadow. When I start mapping this in, I'm going to have a nice medium value. As I map it in, 100% I'm going to make sure that it's a gradual change, just like I did last time and every time after this. Each time I get to a new ring, I'm going to just gradually address how it changes so it's a smooth transition to make it look more realistic and lifelike. You'll even notice at this point of the midtone, I'm going to start singing more of the rings as they go all the way around. I'm going to get to the top of the sphere this time and it's going to make it look more realistic. Please pause the video and put in your midtone on your worksheet. When you have completed this, please push play again. Before we complete the sphere, we're actually going to go back to the bottom edge of our sphere to create our reflected light. This is the light that is seen around the object between the cast shadow and the shadowy edge. It's a little bit of light that is bouncing off of the surface or the table and reflecting onto the object. So I'm going to go back and do this small little sliver, this small little area. If you notice in the example in your worksheet, it doesn't have this and it should. So I want you to map this in on our actual paper, even though it doesn't have it in that example. I'm going to go through and I'm still going to make my shadowy edge transcend gradually into this highlight on the the reflected area. So it's going to be a little bit trickier to make smooth because it's a smaller area to do it in. But as the object curves up into the top of the sphere, I'm going to still keep it darker up there because the reflected light should only be down at that table surface, not above the cast shadow itself. When you get to this point in the video, please go ahead and pause the video and when you have completed it, push play again. 
The last and final step of our sphere is to create the full light as the light source is hitting the top of the sphere. This is where we're going to have our lightest values. On my example, I'm going to do my final two rings, and the first of those rings is going to have a very, very light value, where the one where it's the actual spot where the light is hitting it the most, I'm barely even going to touch it at all. I'm just going to make sure that the entire thing gradually fades from that light value into a white. Once you have gotten to this point in the video, go ahead and complete your sphere.